hello, hello, hello. I have a question for you. Have you ever felt completely lost? You know, seeking purposeful direction that could and should propel your mission within your divine journey to that next level, but still it hasn't happened. Well, my name is Lauren Michaels Harris, and I'm the founder of P3, the journey series. People come to me because they're wounded, many are scared, and even there are those who are bruised simply because they feel that they are increasingly, for whatever reason, losing their ability to dream. Now, this P3 program is not for a person who's just looking to start a business, no, but rather for those of you out there who have been on your journey and you've been navigating within your divine purpose, but you still desire to elevate to that level that you have not reached yet. If this is appealing, if this describes you, then I want to have a chat with you. I want to hear your story. So use the link below to get registered for your free seat at P3, the journey series. And let's get started one story at a time. I'll see you inside. Click the link. What's up guys, Todd Special here and I'm excited to tell you that I'm going to be one of several extraordinary speakers at an event called The Power of We on April 28th. In Chicago, Illinois at the Stan Mansion. This event is put on by a brilliant human who loves to touch the lives of every person he comes in contact with, executive producer Lauren Harris. This event is for the kids, so we're going to keep it clean, but we're going to keep it fun and very impactful. So if you're busy on April 28th, get unbusy. If you think this event isn't for you, you are wrong. Guys, join us April 28th at the Stan Mansion in Chicago, Illinois, for probably one of the most powerful events of the year, the power of we. The power of we was a way of inclusion, a way of inviting anyone who needed or wanted a place to belong. It was just very clear to me that this was something that would really benefit the young folks right here. And to be able to give them a different perspective that I know where they come from, I know what they're experiencing because I was there too, and uh, letting them know that there's different actions that they can take that'll lead to a different destiny. We really needed to hear that in order to change our community we needed to hear that and they are inspired to invest in making it happen that's powerful I'm telling you what, I'm just saying, I love that theme song, y'all. It gets me going. How about you? 
put it in the comments. Gets me going too, because I know it does. Welcome, welcome, and welcome to today's installment of Bathrobe Moments. I'm your host, Lauren Michaels Harris, and I'm excited uh, just because we're live. I'm excited because we are here, and we are here on purpose. What a wonderful thing it is when we don't even have to think about the benefit of what it means when we come together with a like mind, a like spirit, a like soul mission. And that is to change this world into a better place each and every day by being who we were intended to be. Can I get an amen? I'm just so excited about it. I love it. I love it. And I love you. And um, yeah, power we, power we, let me hear you say, power we, coming up, coming up. Oh, uh, 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 April 28th here in Chicago. I'm going to sing everything today because I'm happy. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, I'm happy. I really am. I'm not kidding. Boy, can you imagine all this at five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years old, all this bottled up in that age, it like a little, my boy, my adoptive mother, God rest her soul, she had her hands full now, didn't she? But you know what? Um, I'm just grateful. I'm grateful with all that's going on in this world. Again, let's take a moment, send some prayers, some light and some love for healing and for us, hopefully as soon as possible, a ceasefire. Uh, you, of course, I'm talking about our wonderful friends. Um, and brothers and sisters over in the Ukraine, um, you know, just take a time, take some time, take a minute every day and just send up a prayer for somebody. Those are children. Those are women. Those are men. Those are innocent souls who um, it's just unfortunate. But we are here to help balance things. Right. That's what we do. So listen, I wanted to share a little bit before I get my guest today. He's all the way across the pond in the UK. He's been here before and he, I love, I get him in here just so I can hear him say this word. Crazy, crazy. Oh my goodness. I thought it was crazy. I mean, Adam Duvall, of course, one of the two founders of the uh, mental health warriors movement. And that's exactly what it is. It is a movement. It is a place for people who have dealt with, are dealing with um, mental health issues, how to be strong and how to move through without hiding behind shame and all the things that come with it. These are spiritual gifts of the spirit. They really are. They Mental health, I just think they are doors to get people into their place of purpose, uh, just like everything else is to help us get there. So um, he, he's here today. But first, I want to share another little look at our guest, our special VIP kids coming to the power of we April 28th. Of course, I'm speaking of the incredible Grammy award winning uh, choir, the Chicago uh, children, the soul children of Chicago, headed up by the infamous, wonderful. He's not infamous. He's famous, but he doesn't. He's so Dr. Walt Whitman. He's so modest. Uh, you know, when you tell you all the things, you're like, oh, my God, I'm just so impressed with you. He's like, oh, no, stop, stop. And he really means it. He's just a wonderful man. 40 years they've been doing this with this choir. Won a, they won a Grammy with the group uh, Three Doors Down, a collaboration. And they are just incredible. So I'm going to give you a little taste more. And I got, you know, in a couple days, we're going to meet today. You guys are going to have the link. Those of you are that are in the world and cannot make it to Chicago April 28th, guess what? You get to spend the whole day with us. We're going to do a pay-per-view live stream. You'll be able to get a ticket for just $10 for the entire eight hours or so. Well, from like eight in the morning until uh, four o'clock when the kids go home. So uh, we're so excited uh, to have E360 TV sponsoring this and uh, getting this uh, wonderful anointed experience known as the power of we uh, and making it accessible for all of you. To, to pour your love, to pour your needs, to get poured into from everyone there that day, April 28th. So uh, mark your calendars. Um, in the next couple of days, I'm going to be dropping the link right here on the show. Um, right now, I want each of you, let's do it right now. In the name of togetherness, let's share this broadcast out, shall we? Each person, send it to one person, invite one person. Just do it, just do it, just do it, just do it. Just bring one person because I have a feeling right now, I'm telling you, I'm feeling a download right now that there is somebody who is just sitting there wondering what, what am I going to do? How am I going to do it? Who's going to help me do it? I don't know if I should just give up 
or not, right now, when you invite, somebody's going to get inspired and they're going to come in here today and they're going to make it through this day. And it's because of us. So come on, let's do that, shall we? Thank you. I knew I could count on you. So take this peek, will you, of the uh, these kids. Oh, my goodness. Um, wait till you see this. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, here we go. today and I'm in it. Yes, I'm in it. Uh-oh. That's the first time I've ever done a double ring. Okay, enough, enough, enough. Let's get him in here, you guys. Adam Duvall has been sitting backstage waiting to come out. And listen, you guys, uh, here we go. Let's have a great time together, shall we? Put your hands together. Put your hearts together into this conversation and put some hearts on the screen because here he comes adam duvall mental health warrior it played like twice for you i know Ooh, creepy. No, no, no. Um, no. It's crazy. crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> hey, how are you? We make fun of that word. We do. That we make fun of that word. We make light of that word. Because a lot of us, either we thought we were crazy at one point in this journey, or we were told, you crazy, at one point. And for you younger ones, cray cray, um, and there was nothing crazy about us. There was nothing crazy about anything happening with us. That is the shaming that we're going to talk about today, um, wherein it pertains to mental health. So, Adam, welcome back to Bathroom Wallace. How you been? And how, we know Carrie's out today because she's not feeling well. Um, say hello to the world and tell them where you're at and why you're here. Well, I thought I'd look uh, the part there for you, Loren. So, yeah, why not? Um, Just open right up. Exactly. I'm in Lancashire, uh, in England, and I hate the place, but I are. And yeah, we're here to end the stigma of mental illness because there's too many stereotypes out there, and the stigma's disgusting. So this is what we do. They're disgusting. The stereotypes, yeah. It is. What's the most um, disgusting cereal you've ever eaten? Oh, disgusting cereal. Frosties. Frosties? Yeah, I don't like it. Don't like Frosties? No. For me, it was Lucky Charms, and it was because they're magically delicious there. Okay, I'm try I am want to have an accent. Okay, anyway, I'm not jealous. So, okay, Frosties, got it. So, let's really get going. Tell people, Adam, a little bit about your backstory. Now, you, 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 do you deal with any kind of mental health issues? 
I do every day. Uh, I've got depression, anxiety, PTSD, trauma, you name it. But either way, they're just labels to me. That's all they are. And obviously, like like you said many times, you've got ADHD, Loren. None of us were born with these I don't labels. Know what you're talking about. Okay, yes. Go ahead. Yeah, none of us were born with these labels. So why should we let these labels affect our lives? Why indeed? Exactly. So, so yeah. but did you always have that mindset or did you did you always see these things, these mental health issues through that lens? Or did you once believe the hype that you should be ashamed and shrink yourself because of these things? I am so glad you mentioned that because I'm 31 years old. 31. Yeah, and I only found out mental health actually existed five years ago. Really? Yeah. Well, what'd you think was going on? What'd your family tell you was going on? My family abused me, Loren. Well, they abused me growing up. So I, I was literally stuck in silence. I was practically gagged. But now I found my voice. Kerry keeps trying to shut me up from time to time. But no, I found my voice. Nobody's going to shut me up now. So what was it? What was the first thing that presented? What was the first thing, or the main thing, you know, you know, which was the ring? Who was the ringleader in this mental health gang? I would say myself because. Well, I mean, which mental illness? Oh, which mental illness? What the uh, main one. The trauma. The trauma. Trauma was the one singing all the solos? Yes. Talk about it. What kind of trauma? Well, was it, it all bullying? started. Was it sexual? Was it mental? Well, it all started when I was on. Well, it all started when I was three years old. When, um, which I still even remember, like it was only happened yesterday. Talk and uh, obviously, I I struggled to ride a bike, but I can openly admit I couldn't learn. I learned to ride a bike when I was nine, and uh, my own father punched me in the face because I struggled to ride due to uh, my disability, which is dyspraxia, which affects your coordination. So, and then from then, I was bullied. I was abused every single day from then until adulthood. My routine was get beaten up by my brothers, where my own mother just sat there and watched while she was having a drink, which she was drinking from like two o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, well, that's her problem. And going to school and get bullied there. That was my routine. How? So, how did you, how did you move into each day, knowing? I mean, we can all go back. I'm sure all of us. I don't care how popular you think you were. Everybody remembers that day when some shit was going on at school, or somebody was being mean, and you you wanted to be anywhere in the world, but to go back to that place. Now, for a lot of us, that was just like a storm that passed through every now and then, but to live inside that every single day. Now, I think I remember, didn't you have some part of the story about like when you went to gym class and stuff, PE or, you know, no, no. So what, tell us what the bullying was like at school. What'd they do? Oh. Push, call your names, spit balls. What'd they do? Put your head in the toilet. What'd they do? No bullying. Um, when I was just sat there, just trying to get on with my work, uh, they used to come, Pass me, crack me across the head, um, accuse me of all sorts. Um, I, at that time, I thought nothing was going on at home. I thought the behaviour caused to me was normal. It was actually okay. But I've now learned it's not. And obviously, I was put on child protection when I was a minor because of domestic violence going on between my parents, which I was then told all oh, that was my fault. Because uh, apparently who, I was misbehaving. My parents. You? My parents. Oh. Oh. Yeah, like, like it was my fault, which uh, for years I believed it. But now I thought, no, it's not my fault. Um, My own mother got me uh, drinking alcohol from the age of 12 years old. Because apparently that was the answer to everything. But it's not. It's not. So how many times, if any, because I don't want to assume... No, of course uh, not. Do you ever struggle with suicidal thoughts? I've actually attempted suicide. You have? I um, have. How many times? The, the, countless. Countless. The recent was 18th of March, 2019. That recently? 
about recent. Wait a minute. I knew you then. Hmm? You did? You mean tell me you've had a suicide attempt since I've known you? Yep. Talk about it. Tell us how that happened. Um, Are you okay talking about it? Of course. I'm open to everything now, hence why I do what I do. Yeah. And um yeah, it was all it was all the trauma that built up inside me. I felt y- worthless, ho- um useless. I was alone. Well, I, fe- I felt alone, but I-, I knew all these people kept coming to me saying, "Let me help you, let me help you." I heard them, but th- someone was telling me, "Block it out. They're just lying to you." And then, obviously, the trauma of me losing my daughter to the system with, obviously, no fault of mine, because, uh, obviously, the system blamed my son, who has autism, for her going up for adoption, and um, which, obviously, that happened in 2017. So all that trauma built up, and I thought, right, that's it. I've had enough. So I attempted to uh, end it. Well... Bypassing all the gory details, tell us what was going through your mind. Because I know you love your children. I love them. Yeah. And how you fight for them. Yeah. Um, where you know we we automatically think I I believe that sometimes that like family members and resources, let's say even friends who are there, like those ones that kept coming in saying we'll help you, but you were blocking them out. Um. We always think, people always think, well, how could somebody get that bad, you know, where they would be so selfish to not think about the people they would have left behind, the children, the wife, the rest of us, that sort of thing. Talk about that. Is that something that you walk around when you're pondering, well, should I do it or not? Well, do you, did you, or if not, what do you think keeps one from not seeing what that action would actually create in the lives of the people they care about the most. I think, well, that day it was it was actually Kerry that saved my life, and right. I I know thank you. The words thank you will never ever be enough. Ooh. It'll never be enough, mm. and um, and she has been my absolute rock ever since. And yeah, she she can be annoying. I can be annoying to her sometimes, but. When we're together, we're unstoppable. We're like we're like a rock that doesn't bleed, uh, or a rock that does bleed, shall I say? Uh, I but, that bleeds. Oh come on, come on! That. Exactly, that's what we are. Right, um, and that's why I married her. Because which obviously you shouted at me last time we was on about that. <laughs> I have never shouted at anyone. I know, I know. We love you, Loren. But I have. I would be crazy if I didn't, because I just gotta get out sometimes. But anyway, yeah. um, She tried. Go on. So wait a minute. Let's not just let's not do the fifty-yard sprint past that. Um, How far did you go? My head was on without triggering anyone. My head was literally underwater. Okay. So Carrie literally came in and saved your life. Yeah. And then what what was the point like when something made its way through that dense fog? Something, some word or feeling of reason. That thing that brought you back and said, not today, not today, not yeah. today. Tell us about that specific. Yeah. Note. Yeah. Well. Obviously, I know what Kerry's voice sounds like, of course, but um, there was this voice when I was underwater, this new voice just came to me saying, enough. And that's it. That's when I just rose. I was pulled out. So this new voice. Yeah. I, I, I don't know even today who it was. I don't know. Mm. Do any of you have an idea of what this voice could mean or where it possibly could originate from? I'm interested in knowing what you feel and what you call it when you hear that voice, because we all have access to that megaphone. Yeah, exactly. We really do. You, but we're not just listening with these. We're listening with our entire soul. Our spectral oh. side, yeah. yeah. So has that has the, has the presence and and the knowing 
the knowledge, the true knowledge. Because once you hear something, you can't unhear. Once you see something, you can't unsee it. So how does that feel as far as what you believe today? Has it changed your belief systems in any way? Absolutely, yes. Um, and also like Sherry McQueen put, it could have been my guardian angel. Could have been. Could have been. Um, which I still, I have an idea who my guardian angel is, but I'm, I'm still unsure who it is because it could be anyone. It could be anyone. Um, but I know it's definitely not Kerry. I know that. But um, yeah, my my belief has really changed because I've really tapped into the spiritual side. I've even got tarot cards. So I, I pull them every day. So what's the biggest thing that you notice, the biggest change um, or, and growth in your life since this voice appeared? What's different, Adam? I've learned to spot when an opportunity pops up. I have, because I, I never used that. And obviously the biggest opportunity I, I received was my voice. Mm. My voice. I did a, a mini double on you. Did you hear that ding ding? Wow, your voice, that's powerful. That's powerful. But didn't you think you had your voice before? No. no. No, because no, for years I was living in silence, and um, and my circle of trust was filled with no nothing but toxic, and I've now had a massive clear out of that, and I'm I'm just I love life, I do I love it. I know, I know. Oh my goodness, I can't tell you how many times. I, that's the thing about joy and about purpose and gratitude. It's not just, oh, isn't that great? But it also makes me simultaneously go, hmm, look at when that deceiver, whatever it was, whatever face it carried, tried so hard to get me to work against myself. Yeah. And, you know, I'm going to tell you something. You know what I do nowadays whenever I start hearing way in the distance that whisper of that other voice, that dictator, liar, um, deceiver. Yeah. I hear these things way in the distance and we think it's mm, somebody out there's dealing with that wolf. I can hear it. Yeah. But many times that's us and our spiritual uh, um, hearing, knowing, letting us know, be ready, stand tall, be strong, be prepared. Something that way cometh. And so I want you to kind of talk about, Adam, if it's okay. Um, what do you think that means as far as, uh, uh, say, a mile marker, as far as how far you've moved down this road of divine purpose? Do you feel it's helped you? Do you feel you are now closer or more connected with what you believe to be your divine purpose? Absolutely. And what I, you I've, I've, I've gained my purpose because... I've now got a new life. I've got a new family, which is my partner and my kids. Yeah, I've not got all my kids, but I've got them. And um, and the abusers, all I can say is thank you because they have given me something I have always wanted, and that is a life of living, loving, being grateful, acknowledging it, even accepting and I just smile every time I tell this story or hear about it uh, because that's what it does. It brings growth within you, and, and that's what I do. Yes, it does. Well said, my friend. Well said. And Susan Dahl, she has something uh, that's also been well said. She says, the voice of reason, here's enough. Brings new joy and other stuff. Be the voice. Be ready. Be strong. Hearing. Giving all year long. Ah, that is definitely worthy of a bell ringer. Absolutely. Absolutely. I want to ask you all out there right now, all of you, um, have you, I'm interested, have you heard something that, that like a, a voice? I refer to it as that. Adam refers to it as that. What, what's happened with each of you? that moment where you know something somewhere reached in and said, Psst, 
over here, you know? And you knew with every part of you down to a cellular level that, wait a minute, I'm not alone after all. Because those dark thoughts, those lies, those things that are not there to serve us, they really only have any power, if at all, when they are successful in getting us to believe we are all alone. Think about that for a moment. Because there is power within the two-letter two, two word, we. That's why we're instructed. Uh, if, you know, you want to protect a lot. You want to gain a lot. You want to understand everything that's coming through your 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 world that day. Find someone else as quickly as possible and combine your spot, your powers and your purpose and you'll be just fine. So um, really interesting. Listen, we're going to jump off real quick and go to uh, just a brief break um, for clear reasons. We'll be right back with more of Adam Duvall from the UK and we'll be talking and diving deeper into the fight for mental health awareness. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Hello, hello, hello. I have a question for you. Have you ever felt completely lost? You know, seeking purposeful direction that could and should propel your mission within your divine journey to that next level, but still it hasn't happened. Well, my name is Lauren Michaels Harris, and I'm the founder of P3, the journey series. People come to me because they're wounded. Many are scared. And even there are those who are bruised simply because they feel that they are increasingly, for whatever reason, losing their ability to dream. Now, this P3 program is not for a person who's just looking to start a business, no, but rather for those of you out there who have been on your journey and you've been navigating within your divine purpose, but you still desire to elevate to that level that you have not reached yet. If this is appealing, if this describes you, then I wanna have a chat with you. I want to hear your story. So use the link below to get registered for your free seat at P3 the journey series and let's get started one story at a time i'll see you inside click the link City. We have an amazing event at the Stan Mansion in Chicago. It is called The Power of We, run by my man, my boy, Mr. Lauren Harris. You guys better be there, because I will too, and I hope to see you guys soon. Peace! Today's installment of Bathroom Moments. I'm your host, Laura Michaels Harrison. Today, we're kicking it with the mental health warrior, half of that founding duo, Adam Duvall, carries out ill today, but we send her light, love, and uh, healing. That's what we do. And I just want to remind you before we get Adam back in here, coming up later this week, we'll providing we'll be providing you the link where you can go and purchase your pay-per-view ticket to the Power of We Symposium, the full day experience for just $10 US. Uh, and uh, we want you to come and be a part and to share and pour into these kids and be poured into by what uh, we're trying to do. It's called magic and it is an anointed experience. So please consider joining us. We're trying to make it easy. 
right? There you go. Adam, welcome back. Welcome back. Thank you, Thank you for sticking around. So this next section, um, uh, let's talk about the people. Well, tell us about this mental health warrior thing. And you got show us your mug again, if you could. Hey, we've got pens as well. I know you guys have been hot and on it. There you go. Love the branding, all of it. And what does it say on there underneath in red? Talk about what that It means. says ending the stigma of mental illness. And that's exactly what it is. Because mental health itself, it doesn't make us stupid or get away from them or even ill. It doesn't. It shows strength. And what we do is, yeah, it can be serious, but we, we also laugh at mental health. That's what we do. We laugh at it. What do you mean by that? Okay. What we do is because laughing, like I, I, I did a podcast when we're at um, Tuesday mm -hmm. um, about bringing laughter back to the universe. Mm. And um, obviously my guest, Pete Cam, at the time, because um, he, he does podcasts all about laughing because children laugh between two and 300 times a day. Those adults seem to forget. I was just talking about that. Was it yesterday, y'all, or the day before? Yes. Laughter is powerful. It's healing. It's magical. Exactly. And that's what we do. And when you're laughing at it, it shows you have got control over your own struggles or challenges. But if it doesn't, then it's got control over you. Mm. I'm just I've saying. seen both sides. That's right. That's right. So... In the mental health warrior family, because that's really what it feels like. Um, I in, I watch what you do. Talk about the people that have been benefiting from coming together, just feeling like they belong somewhere. Some for many, for many, it's the very first time. Talk about what that feels like. And what's the vibe inside of this group you have? What's oh, going on in there? Oh, it's, it's not just a group. We are building a community here, and obviously, you get you get podcasts that talk about depression, autism. We're covering the entire freaking blanket here, and that's what we're doing. We're not just ending the stigma of mental illness, but we're doing disability discrimination as well, because this is the world we are living in, and we are we've got warriors from America, Australia, the U UK. And we are all coming together to do this mission, succeed this mission. And we will not stop until it's done. There you go. Man, I feel your passion. Seriously. You. Adam. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm, I'm encouraged because of you today. Because, boy, do I see a difference. I remember. Do you? I'm sure you do. I do. Talk about it if you can. You Do you remember the very first time I interviewed you? Yes. Yes, I do. And and what you you texted me was it later that day or the next day? And uh, do you remember the story? I do the remember the story. Yeah, because I remember when it was on the break. Obviously, I didn't have glasses on, but I, I was like that. I was literally crying, and and now look. And then the but then afterwards, you had some. It was a rough couple of days or something. It, yeah, I, I had a really tough couple of days because that was like one of the first ever time I actually opened up about my story. And now... I'm, and now look. Yeah. People now keep telling ready. me to write a book. People say write a book, but no. I don't think I'm ready to yet. Yeah, but you're doing what you are ready yes. for. <laughs> and sticking your toes in the water of those things that you're not quite ready to dive in and swim the length of the pool. But I'm willing to consider it. Well, the my... mental health worries in general, yes, I built it. I built that bus and I started driving it. But I have to give a special thanks to my late great friend, Philip Chan, who sadly passed away last year. Um, he's the one that actually encouraged me to build the mental health warriors. And why did he think it was so important? Adam? Well, he he obviously changed everybody's life and if people didn't know him well I, yeah but if people did know him they'd know exactly the type of person he was he never put himself first never and um and he literally was one of these that never fell asleep he 
I, I remember receiving a phone call one day from someone called Ben Chai, another brilliant person. And he told me that Phil rang him at three o'clock in the morning just to praise me of how much I actually accomplished in my life. And obviously, obviously this was after his passing, but when he was here, he knew I was struggling uh, mentally. And he basically rang me up and said, Adam, you've got a lot of things to achieve in your life. Get the Mental Health Warriors built and I will help you. And that's exactly what I did. That's awesome. Congratulations on that, Adam. Thank you. It's, uh, I, I get it. So proud of you. Now, listen, have you ever um, lost a friend or a family member due to mental illness? Not as I know. Has any of, have any of you out there ever lost a friend or a family member uh, solely due to um, some mental illness? Um, I got an interesting one for that. My brother-in-law, Joe. Took his own life a couple right those same years COVID came. Uh, like we were at his funeral like two weeks before it was on the news about COVID. Um, and he suffered from <clears throat> excuse me, depression from that stemmed from chronic pain. And I'll tell you the thing that I'll always live with is how many times we would be at family dinners and stuff in the kitchen and he'd be in the living room crying out saying you know about all this pain and how i can't take it and everybody was like oh that's just joe uh you know and i learned you know because i heard his last voicemail where he was explaining it to his namesake his junior his son and i couldn't even none of us have been able to listen to the entire thing because in his voice you can hear that that last guitar string is about to break and um he took a shotgun and killed himself and it just, you know, made me very, what's the word, I'm very much aware of my own responsibility to understand that when somebody says that something is hurting them, when somebody says that it feels like, and it could be a description that is not even, you can't even imagine it, it sounds so crazy. There's that word again. Um, You'll say it more than me. <laughs> yeah, and you dismiss this. You dismiss what the person is expressing that they're feeling because you have no reference point. And that's when we should say, thank God that I don't know exactly what you mean. But because here's the deal, Adam, it doesn't matter what comes out of someone's mouth or what they're describing or there's a bunch of people chasing me or whatever. If it's real to them, yeah, then it's real. Yeah. And I learned that from it. And I drop my head in shame uh, for whatever reason, not having done better. But purpose takes my chin and brings my head back up because it says it's not about what you didn't do. It's about what you now must do. And so that's why I love these these conversations. And I love uh, talking with people just like you because you're doing something. You're doing something. So what what what? Would you say, if you were to, you know, in, in 10 words, someone said in 10 words, Adam, what would you li like to see change as far as everything you're doing? What is that thing that you're hoping one day you probably said, you know, when we started, it looked like this. But now that we've been doing it for 40 years or whatever, um, it looks like this. Talk about what your vision is. What have you been shown you are going to do with this piece? Um, again, the biggest thing we want to do is end the stigma of mental illness. Get stories out there because it doesn't matter who you are, what age you are, we all have a story. And if you are not ready to tell that story, that is okay. We are promoting that it's okay not to be okay. And even like it says on this cup as well, right at the bottom, I know it's little, but it says we've got mottos, hashtag never quit, hashtag the mental health warriors, and hashtag let's talk. Ooh, a triple. 
A triple. One for each one of those points. And so does this work of service that you guys do, you and your wife, Carrie, and all the others that are part of it? Because yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's a team. It's a family. It's a team. Exactly. Um, talk about when somebody new shows up. That's a good piece right okay. there. Yeah, it is. Feel, um, oh, I don't know if I can talk about Oh, I don't know if they'll judge me. Talk about what it feels like the day someone new comes. Okay. Um, is that in the in the page itself or on the podcast? Into you, however they come inside that world okay. where you all... Um, right. When they come on the podcast, obviously they know we're about to go stream live, but we, we talk to them briefly for about five, ten minutes beforehand, and they're practically shaking because of how nervous they are, really are. And we try and keep it limited, but we dive deep at the same time. And then once 45 minutes have gone, the live's over. They turn around and went, it's like talking to an old friend. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've been getting regular. So do you find, what do you think is uh, like, why, why is it so hard for so many of us to just crack the eggshell of our yep. story that very first time? You know, a lot of people are afraid to open their mouths and let their truths flow freely. What, what do you think is the detriment if we don't find a way to do that? What do you think? What is the worst thing about that when we don't share our stories and we let our shame sew our, our mouths shut? Well, if people don't share their stories, then the stigma carries on for generations after generations, like it's been doing for decades already. Since even the late 1700s, that's when the stigma started. But now we're here today, 2022, and the stigma is still here. And we want to break this. And I've even said to many people, we're all going to die at some point. And we always have to be grateful and proud that this could be our last day of Earth. We, no, tomorrow is mystery to us all. Yes. But once me and Kerry finally pass away, the mental health warriors will not die with us. Mm. The mental health warriors is going to go to our kids and then they're going to grow it as well. <laughs> but either way, we die, our stories don't. Our stories live on. Oh, that's a big piece of the puzzle, my friend. Yeah. That's a big piece. A lot of people can't. They don't know. They don't know that. Hmm? They don't know that. People well, seem to forget that. Well, or they're afraid of it. Yeah. Because it, it 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 holds within it a certain a certain depth of responsibility that a lot of people just aren't ready to try to carry, to try mm -hmm. to hold. Um so what was the what would you say was the greatest benefit for you personally by whipping off that blanket of shame and saying, you know what, what you're looking at isn't perfect by any means or any standard. But I'm perfect to me. I've learned that when people attack me or to even try and bully me, I used to take that personally. And it used to affect me for days, if not weeks. Now, I just laugh about it because at the end of the day, it's showing the world that, yeah, there's that individual throwing all these judgmental comments to those calling us stupid, calling, saying mental health is a joke. But the other way, they're taking time out of their... I don't even know how to brand their life at the minute, but they're taking time to focus on your life over their own. Over their own. Exactly, which shows what's going on in their life. And that's why I did um, I did a podcast with Alan Stevens from Australia a while back saying, why do bullies actually bully? Yeah. Because something's going on in their life. Of course. Yeah. So, boy, do you... Um, it's so, this is such... Uh, it's, that's an interesting thing about this conversation that I find that no matter how many times I have it with how many different people I have it with, it always feels different. Every day it feels different. Now, I, 
I accept my mental illness um, just like I accept my mental wellness because they are one in the same. Exactly. Um, they are one in the same. And what I love about this type of work on self is that it works directly in the opposite flow of the mortality process. You know, I'm getting older. Like you said, we're all going to die one day. Yeah. But this, what I love about this, just like when we stretch and evolving, that's pushing it in the other direction. Something's getting stronger. Something's growing larger. Something is meaning more, becoming more meaningful. So you're yeah. full because we must always pour. We cannot pour from an empty cup. Exactly. The saying is my cup runneth over, not my cup runneth out. And that's why it is important to understand there are gifts uh, behind or in within any mental illness. There are protective forces. There are creative juices. There are things within everything within us that can take us and other people to new and exciting levels of enlightenment and understanding. Yes. I believe that. And just like you, and you have an autis autistic son, and a lot of us- Both our kids have got autism, both okay. of them. Okay, and they're just special. You know, yeah. we were talking about this the other day all the time. I remember when I was a kid, they used to say, oh, you know, well, he's a nice boy, but he's got special needs. You know, he's special needs. Well, every kid is special. And every kid has needs. Every adult is special. And every adult has needs. So we're all special needs. And if you're not, that kid therein could be the problem. You don't understand you have needs. We must yeah. understand our needs because needs come with a plan. Mm. Everybody focuses on wants. I want a better job. I want to be famous. I want a million followers. I want, I want, I want. And want is the equivalent, in my opinion, to a wish list. Because it doesn't make you sit down and plan it out. So, what are your? So what do you see for the future? What are your goals? You got anything? Uh, will there be events uh, with Mental Health Warrior? Well, uh, what What do you think will happen in the next year or two with this with this uh, movement, this community? Well, by two thousand twenty three, we are aiming to get more merchandise out there. And we're also aiming to actually cut back on doing it virtually and actually getting out into the community. We don't like the word interview. We like the word discussion and giving that person the platform to share something they have been fearing and afraid to share of for years. And that is their story. Uh -huh. And that's what we're doing, like Kerry Pop, live shows, traveling the UK and see people face to face. And if it means it, you never know. We could end up in Chicago. You sure could. You sure will. I'll just put it that way. And, and, you know, here's another thing is, you know, um, mental awareness. Yep. You know, a lot of people, I, I can't wait till somebody tackles that label because even that one is a little crooked. You know, it's it's like, you know, it's a picture in a frame, but the picture has slid, you know, like it's inside the little box inside the frame and the picture slides and it's crooked. And you got to like turn the frame and tap it to make yeah. it fall back in place. I feel that way about that term, mental awareness, because we always think it means, did you know this? Here's something you might not have known. And then we skip all over how it applies to our own, you know, view of ourselves. Um, I have to be constantly aware of my ADHD because if I am, when I am not, let's put it that way. When I am not, I, I don't, I lose at some point the ability to respond to my situation and I immediately start reacting to my situation. And I have never found, if I'm not under intimate threat of physical danger, I should not knee jerk response. Yeah. Because that's what fight or flight is there for imminent, na uh, natural, physical uh, threat of danger. And that's when you are supposed to fear. But if there's no threat of imminent danger, 
then fear is a liar. This is the place where we reach for our ability to be fearless so that we fear a little bit less because when you step, when you fear a little bit less, you love a little bit more. And there are only two sponsoring thoughts, meaning they start off the launch pad from either fear or love. Do you actually know what fear stands for? I've heard false evidence appearing real. Yeah. There's other, there's two others as well, which 95% of the time people do it and that's forget everything and run. You shouldn't do that. You should no. face everything and rise. And rise. That's and that's, what, that's, and that's what we do. Yes. 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 And yes. So why do you think? Because this is what I like to do. I like to reverse engineer these things. How did they get to this point where so many of us just automatically take it on and don't challenge it? Well, because it was a rule. Well, you know yeah. what? Rules were made to be broken. That's Thank why you. laws get stricken and replaced by what is better. Um, and so, you know, I wonder why I like to go back. Well, I don't wonder why I like to go backwards about the shaming. You know, we should be ashamed when we don't share what's going on. You see what I'm saying? Um, I think it all should start in this awareness. Um, I do not. I'm just going to brand it as an awareness program or even a project. It should all start in schools in definitely schools because that's where they're not educating the children enough about the mindset or the law of attraction and they need to do this mm -hmm. like when i dropped my daughter off at school a couple of weeks back uh, obviously they're breaking up for uh, they broke up for easter now but mm -hmm. when they were there obviously she's been going a, a number of years now that was the first time I've actually seen kids doing yoga. Oh, I've never seen kids doing yoga. Well, now they are. Wow, that's awesome. awesome. Yeah. Ross, so nice to see you, my friend, as well as the rest of you in there. I see you. I just didn't want to interrupt uh, Guru here, Adam Duvall. Guru. <laughs> um, Ross McCreary, I want to know, did you have your surgery? If so, I hope you're doing well. If not, it must be coming up. Everybody send uh, Ross in whatever the situation is. Lots of life, um, love, and, and healing. Uh, uh, he's gone through some stuff. But, man, talk about somebody who is a powerful mind of, of just pushing through and getting through. That's this guy, you guys. Ross says when people don't share, they let that pain go way too deep internally. Yeah. They then lose meaning in their lives. And in too many cases, it ends up with them taking their lives. That is right. Okay, so Ross, you did have it. Still recovering. I would think it was just like last week. Um, bless you. Hello, Ellie Lawton, also in the UK. Good morning to you, Carrie. Let me see. Why is that name ring a bell? Oh, yeah. That's your wife. Live she's show. She's supposed to be sat next to me. You're what? She's supposed to be next to me, but she's yeah, not. Yeah. But that's crazy. Live show. She wants to travel around the UK and see people face to face. I see that happening. Um, I believe that's Jamie Lane saying happy morning. It is. Us. We're glad to see him back. And also Sarah McQueen uh, and the rest of the crew out there. Um, Miss uh, Susan, nice to see you and the rest of you. Okay. So we have just about one minute left. So Adam, Adam, Adam. Yes. What would leave everybody with something to chew on for the rest of the day? So let's say speak to that person who needs to make a decision about is it time for me to face my fears regarding my mental health, whatever. Um, give them something to go on, would you please? Absolutely. Yeah, well, don't make the same mistake I did because I lived it in silence for 21 years when it comes to the pain and the abuse I suffered. But now we and the Mental Health Warriors do horse shows, live shows, which stream pretty much everywhere, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, the lot. And in fact, we're actually live tonight. And the guest we've got is it, supposed to be Loren Harris, but he's not. He's busy with his event, but hey, oh, we love him still. Um, uh, no, but the, yeah, on the other side, I, I'll i be there. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, there you go. And we're all here. Just keep talking. Okay, you guys on the screen, it's uh, crawling along underneath our names. Head over to Facebook and Adams MH Warriors. 
mental health warriors get over and check them out and then there's also right here oh that's the same one where's oh this big old thing youtube they have a great youtube channel we're gonna drop this incredibly long <laughs> uh, i need to edit it i apologize no, he's gonna get his pretty link we found that out today but number mine I'll tell you what, I'm going to drop it inside the comment section at the conclusion of today's broadcast in just about a minute. And that way you can click over and take a look at some of these episodes. I guarantee you, you're going to be glad you did. Adam, I want to thank you for always showing up and pouring into all of us. And um, we send lots of love to Carrie. Tell her we miss her. I know she was in the comments. Thank you. And thank all of you out there. Because okay, show us to come on. That's right. We could not do this. We couldn't. And I wouldn't want to. I just want you to remember as we leave today, first of all, join me tomorrow morning, God willing, out front. Who do I have? Oh, oh, I love this couple, Zan Ray and Tom Collins, not to be confused with the drink. They'll be here. Um, what is my phone doing ringing? I thought I had it on mute. Wow. I know. That's a interruptions. Yes. Yes. Listen, you guys. Join us tomorrow. Great two guests coming to round out the week of powerful stories here on Bathrobe Moments. And I just want to say get out there today and make a difference. Make a difference by being that difference. And uh, don't ever think that what you have to offer isn't enough. No matter how you show up, it is enough. Take that with you and don't you forget it because why? I love you and there ain't nothing you can do about it. I'll see you tomorrow for our next episode of Bathrobe Moments. Thanks, Adam. Bye-bye. Oh